Hello everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 where I'll be giving you five tips for tomorrow's racing where I'll be sticking to the flat action at Chester for the second day of the Boodles May Festival there and also as well I'll be giving you a couple of selections from the evening meeting at Chelmsford. Now before we get into that let's quickly review on how our selections performed today. In the end it's not been a bad day, a bit of a mixed one. We didn't get off to the best of starts. My Nap Army of India was slightly disappointing but I think you can put a line through that run moving forward. If you actually uh, watch the start back, Sherlong who won the race in stall four kind of came out to the right when he uh, left the stalls and it kind of just ended up being like a domino effect for those uh, to the right of him. Uh, the horse next to him veered right and then went into Army of India and kind of just took him out and even Army of India, some of the horses next to him on his right, they uh, were impeded too. So yeah, I think a lot of the horses that were drawn out wide at Chester today in that particular race, I think you can forgive the majority of them Okay, I do understand that, and we all do know as well, that you need to be drawn towards the inside, really, most of the time. But Army of India, from what he'd been doing on all of his runs, he's a horse that normally starts fast, likes to get out to the front, and in the end, he was always up against it. And I knew from the start of the race that we had no chance of getting back into it. So that was a little bit frustrating there. Soldier of Love, unseated uh, Brani Frost. And at the start, actually, he didn't look happy with himself. Brani had to niggle him along. So that was a bit frustrating. However, one of our highlights of the day, or our only highlight, really, was a youth spirit winning uh, the Group 3 at Chester. It was a nice performance in the end under Tom Marquand, riding for Andrew Bolden. There was a couple of nervy moments. I thought he wasn't going to get out. I thought he was going to get boxed in, but the gap did open up for him. And in the end, he asserted well in the closing stages. What I found quite surprising is how weak he was in the market. He ended up going off at 15 to 2 in the end. He drifted out a little bit. So yeah, a little bit of an odd one there, but he did the job very impressively and definitely going to be a horse to follow this season. Elsewhere, um, uh, the horse I put up, Uncle Jumbo, was a warm favourite at Chester. Um, in the end, could only finish in third place. Probably just did a bit too much out in front. But yeah, just a, ran an okay race. But yeah, just uh, probably given all that weight away didn't help him. But yeah, a little bit frustrating there. And then the other horse uh, that we put up to run at Newton Abbott, uh, she's a novelty, got the extra place, advertised at five to one, so it meant we just got our money back there. We still do have one tip to run tonight at Kempton, where the horse called Ministerial has been relatively strong all day, been holding its position at the top of the market. Hopefully that can give us a winner there, and it means if uh, if it wins, uh, we're in good shape for the day. So yeah, not, not a bad day at all, but yeah, it'd be nice if that one could win for us. Anyway, like I said at the top of the video, five tips for tomorrow's racing, where we're focusing at Chester and at Chelmsford. And we go to Chester for the first tip tomorrow in the 145, the opening race there, class two handicap. And I thought Copper Knight had a really good chance in this race for Jane Sullivan and Tim Easterby. At the current time of recording was available at 11 to two. And I'm gonna recommend a 0.5 each way selection here. Now he has been disappointing in the last year or so. And as a result has fallen down uh, the weights quite a lot. He's now down to a mark of 85. But if he retains any of his old ability, he should be able to defy this mark. Now he's already had a run. He ran at Musselburgh in the Sprint Cup there when he finished in seventh place, probably needed it. And I think he'll come on for it. I've noticed a lot of Tim Easterby's horses this season have needed the run, so I think you can mark it up. And they're now starting to hit form, so I think that's definitely a positive for him. Got a great course record as well, has won twice at this meeting in the past, and then the only other time he didn't win, he finished second. So he absolutely loves the place. He's got a really good draw tomorrow in Stall 3, and he won't mind at all if there is a little bit of rain around. There's a bit of cat in the ground at Chester at the moment, but if there was a shower or two, he wouldn't mind that. So a lot of ticks in the boxes tomorrow for him. Got a nice low race and weight. And if he retains any of his potential, I think he's a good each way bet there. So he's the first tip to kick things off. We then go to the 215 at Chester with a horse called Maximal. I thought he was a bit of a big price here at 9-2 compared to some of the others in this race for Richard Kingscoat and Sir Michael Stout. Both arrive here in fairly decent form. And this horse, Maximal, I thought ran a really good race in a conditions race at uh, Newbury on his last start. OK, it was not long ago, but the form has already started to work out quite well. Horse of Richard Hannans that I think finished fourth called River, uh, River Alwyn. Uh, he went on to win at uh, Newmarket at the weekend, shoulder in top weight. And it was quite a nice ride actually that day. 
by Jamie Spencer, probably the ride of the meeting, I would say. But uh, yeah, it's nice to see that form there. He's got a lovely pedigree as well, a uh, top Judmont pedigree, and is by Galileo, so you think he's going to improve with age. And I think he's got a good chance in this race tomorrow. I'm not too keen on many of his rivals, and I thought 92. He did represent a little bit of value there. He's got not a bad draw to work for with from Stool 1 as well. And I think going around to Ben Tamari instead of a stiff long straight will be more in his favour. He um, won at Sandown last season and had some smart juvenile form. And I think he, if he can get into a good position tomorrow, be handy, I think he might be the one to be on with Richard King's coat riding so well at the moment. So he's going to be my extra tip of the day there. We then have my next best in the free 15 and I'm going to go with a horse here called Mirando for Sylvester D'Souza and Andrew Bolden. Currently available at the time recording at 4 to 1. I'm going to recommend a one point win bet with him in the colours of King Power Racing. Now, again, this is a horse with a, a, a great record at the track, has won a couple of times at the course here, including this race in uh, 2019 when he absolutely bolted up that day. And if he can get an easy lead tomorrow and get to the front early on, he might be able to dictate this. He won't mind the ground as well. Now, probably the horse that is on an upward curve is Trushan for Alan King. But he might just need this run. And also as well, he's got to give away £5 to the field. I'm not that keen on the chances of Japan. I thought he was quite disappointing last year. And he's often um, he often needs his first run of the season. He's from a family that typically do. The likes of Mogul or, and some of his other relatives always needed their first run. So I think uh, I would want to be against him tomorrow. And I think Miranda, if Sylvester D'Souza can go to the front with him early on, again, he won't mind the cut at all. A bit of a mudlark of this horse, but uh, there should be plenty of cut in the ground for him tomorrow. I think he's got a really good chance. And if he, like I said, if he can break well, get to the front, he might just be able to dictate it here. And he's got quite a lot of things, I think, in his favour tomorrow. So that's why he's going to be my next best of the day. We then go to the evening action at Chelmsford for my long shot. Not the biggest long shot I'm ever going to put up here, but it's a horse called Richie Valance for uh, Laura Pearson claiming five, riding for her boss, Tom Clover. This horse at the current time recording was available at seven to one with Skybet, who offer him four places on the race. And I'm going to recommend a 0.5 each way selection here. Now this horse is now down to a mark of 80, which is one pound below his last win the mark. He actually won over the course and distance when we uh, resumed racing uh, back in June last year off a mark of 81, where he had the run of the race that day and it was a good win. Ever since then, he has struggled a little bit, I think going back up in the weights, but I think he started fine in his form recently. He finished second at Wolverhampton last time out in an apprentice race, but the form has worked out okay because the winner from Charlie Fellow Stable went into a score again, so it's nice to see the form boosted there. Laura Pearson's got a good draw tomorrow in Stool 5, and if they do go hard early on, it might just set up for the likes of Richie Valance, and I think he's got a really good chance of at least making the frame, and who knows, he might be good enough to win at a fair price there. So he's going to be my tip in the 6.20 at Chelmsford. We then go to my nap, the last tip of the day in the 6.50, with a horse called Blow Your Horn for Jamie Spencer and Charlie Fellows. Now, this horse was an impressive winner in a small field race, last time at uh, Newcastle and this horse has just really been getting to grips with things of late. He's been putting in some really good performances, finished second on his turf start, on, on his penultimate start at uh, Doncaster, running on really strongly. And Jamie Spencer tomorrow, there's no better man in my opinion when holding up a horse coming um, from the back of the field. And I think we could see a Spencer masterclass here. You're going to have Merhib, the Oshin Murphy's on, will probably uh, go up to the front and try and make the run in and it could set up for him quite nicely. Going up and trip as well to uh, Marlon Six tomorrow, I think will really suit him. I think off a mark of 83, there could still be a little bit more to come. And this horse as well is by Golden Horn, who's really one of my favourite sires to follow. I think his horses are just getting better with age, you know. And I think there's lots to like about this horse's chances. Currently available at the time recording at 9 to 4. I thought that was quite a fair price there. And I could see him maybe going off around about 6 to 4 tomorrow, 13 to 8. I think he could be a bit shorter in the betting as we get closer to the race. So yeah, um, Blow Your Horn, he's going to be my nap of the day. He runs in the 6.50 at Chelmsford and fingers crossed we can end the day with a winner there. So there are the five tips for tomorrow's racing. If you're enjoying these videos, remember to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe here to my YouTube channel at LuckyLoads15. If you, um, you want to follow me on social media, the best place to do so is on Twitter where my handle is at LuckyLoader15. And if you want to find out a little bit more about myself, my website address is www.chrisladeracing.co.uk. So please gamble responsibly. Hopefully we can have some winners tomorrow and we'll be seeing you soon.